With the uh, environment design for World of Warcraft, we uh, really wanted the uh, environments to have a really handcrafted feel. We wanted the terrain to uh, really have that feel that it was created, you know, by hand. We really wanted to make sure that all the little details were embellished to the point, you know, the viewer could tell that it just wasn't computer generated. For example, like the palettes and the detail in the environment, we really wanted to make sure that the viewer got rewarded with a lot of detail and, and things like that. So we treated them just as key as the characters, as the monsters and everything else. Absolutely. There's not any one element of our game that stands out too far above the rest is that we treated the environments, the tile sets, uh, everything just as important as a character, as a weapon. You know, everything received that equal amount of, of just real handcrafted treatment. A lot of the artists, too, actually were, you know, hiking fanatics. And, you know, we have some people that are really outdoors uh, type artists, and they really bring that to the table. They, you know, they talk about like North Carolina or Pennsylvania. And, you know, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out just visually what's the most interesting angles to approach things. We didn't just isolate out terrain and just think of a lot of high-res textures or, you know, high-res geometry for the terrain. We realized that it was just as crucial that the terrain marry with lighting, with the fog. Uh, all of these elements were very important to pull together. And, uh, you know, uh, just in layman's terms, we, we just pulled a lot of old-school tricks to try to get across a lot more than what we're really doing technically and, and keep, you know, keep all this under wraps where people could still afford to enjoy a nice frame rate and a beautiful vista all at the same time. We had a lot of beautiful color studies, which you'll see as we're talking about this. The game is about a game of trees. You have to have good trees in these kind of games. You stare at the terrain all the time, and we had some of the artists working on some of the trees. You'll notice that we have a really wide range of design for trees. We spent many years <laughs> looking at the trees and studying them, and they're really like the the glue that holds everything together. We were working on one of our earlier zones, and we concepted tree after tree after tree and built tree after tree after tree. And I remember laughing when I realized that we probably had about 50 iterations of this one tree that we just kept refining and trying to get it, you know, as reasonable as possible as far as, you know, poly counts and texture counts. And we went probably through weeks of collective <laughs> testing on some of those trees over and over again. And then once we had those, it was sort of a framework for the ones to follow. I was just going to say that, yeah, when we got the color studies going, that, I felt like that was a really key point in uh, development for the environments. Once we started doing that, you know, it it, uh, it impacted us, and it took us a while to ramp up, but uh, the initial prep work it took to get these environments, it uh, really paid off in the end. It just, everything married together so much better. Yeah. Our team of environmental artists spent a lot of time developing their techniques on the terrain itself, learning what types of patterns look best when you're running through the game. Uh, we were really particular about hills and rises and visibility. Initially, we made almost too many hills where, for gameplay reasons, it was harder to see the spawns and things like that. So in addition to just making a beautiful-looking scene, we had to work closely with game design. We, a lot of times, had to compromise on a lot of things to make sure that gameplay was still there. We wouldn't just uh, do one of them for a zone, we'd also do one for different times of day. So we'd have one that was drawn to illustrate what the daytime light settings would be. We would do some for the evening time settings. We found that the sunrise and sunset were some of the most fun values to work with and offered like some of the best lighting. We actually uh, enjoyed them so much, a lot of times we would purposely kind of let the keyframing be very loose. Mornings and, and evenings actually bleed in very heavily to noon and to midnight so that you got to enjoy some of that dusky, dusty sort of feel a lot more of the day because it was just more dramatic and, you know, just pretty. Just Basically, really the, the sunset lasts for like eight hours in our game. Or like that. <laughs> just because it, it, it looks be. so cool. <laughs> it, just, it just runs all day. We wanted to make sure that the palettes of the zone reflected somewhat in the race very subtly. For example, the undead area of Tears Fall Glades, we wanted to kind of keep it cool colors. Kind muted. Of per muted. Yeah. For the night elf areas in Teldrassil, we wanted to infuse some of that color back in there, and we were careful to keep the palette, I don't know, maybe two colors, trying to keep it simple as possible. If you run around like sort of in the undead starting area, you can kind of check out the little vegetation growing on the ground, and even those themes of the undead are there just in the vegetation just for fun little flavor, vines crawling up and choking out these purple flowers and things so even down to that 
degree the art team kind of paid yeah. attention to the details they definitely and took advantage of every little uh, area i think some of the grasses have cobwebs you know infused in a little bit and yeah. uh, hopefully like a crate or a barrel in the undead starting area it's going to look and have its own uh, look and feel compared to a crate or a barrel in the human starting area and uh, everything from the pallets to you know the wood having more cracks and broken nails and and knife scratches in it or whatever it just they definitely took it all the artists definitely took advantage if they got to paint a texture for it they definitely used every pixel to uh represent the environment that this prop was going to be be set into so i mean i know i totally agree and i think one of the things that we strive for too is just the uniqueness of what we want to do we want to make sure that the zones look as good as possible as far as like if you were to take a screenshot of our game and you see it in a magazine it looks different. It has a certain look to it that you're not going to find easily. Working on a game of this scope and detail really pushed the art staff to really just think about what actually we're doing. I mean, it's it's so much different than the usual type of games we're used to making that you're creating an entire world. You're, you're creating the atmosphere and lighting and terrain and the look and feel and Sometimes it's really interesting. You'll you'll be working on a piece of environment and you'll get stuck and then you'll drive home and, and see the sunset or or see some kind of imagery that inspires you. So and then you go back to work the next day and you're like, Oh, you know, I saw this you know, the sunset yesterday and it totally changed what we should do. Yeah, we had lots of uh just elements to work with in the editor for creating the world. You know, we had the uh the directional lighting, the ambient lighting, those sun color, the moon color, fog color, and all the gradations of colors in the sky. And I know Brandon did most of that stuff for so many of the zones, you know, the water color, cloud color. And so we just take our time and, and put these together in you know, in the right order and uh, playing off each other, the the right colors, the right settings to create just that unified look and feel overall we really wanted to have the environments have that old maxfield parish or that nc wyeth that warm feel that handcrafted feel i know we say that a lot but uh we really wanted to have that look and even in the trees if you look at the trees you know it's it's very hand painted all the textures and we were careful how things blend together how trees would blend into the environment we were constantly racking our brains about the tile set what was too busy you know initially a lot of the roads were too busy and too dark and we had to simplify those and it was uh it was definitely a learning process you know for for everyone but uh, kudos to the team though 